Hi, I'm John Kretschmer, author of the Used Boat Notebook. We're continuing our series on great boats to sail the world. We're in Seattle, Washington today, and I'm standing aboard Fathom, a 1987 Passport 40 designed by Bob Perry. I'll be honest with you, this is one of my favorite boats, and I think it represents a terrific value in a blue water cruiser. It's beautiful, it's strong, it's capable, and it has a lot of style. We're going to start our review down below where we examine the lovely teak interior. Drop below into the interior of the Passport 40. There's no denying that one of the great attractions of this boat is the interior. It's just beautiful. You've got the Taiwanese woodwork, which is hard to match, and the interior arrangement is perfect for one couple. It's, uh, it's an ideal cruising interior. I'm standing in the galley right now, and uh, there's quite a few features about the galley that I like. The first is that it's positioned right on the center line. The cook is not sequestered off in a corner. They're right here in the main traffic flow of the boat. And the galley itself is very functional. It's kind of an L-shaped galley with a little twist to it. Really good, safe working area. Um, this particular boat, Fathom, has a new Force 10 stove, which has a nice feature where the oven door actually reclines into the stove, so the stove maintains its gimbal as you're placing things in and out of the oven. But the Passport itself has some pretty cool features. There's a built-in cutting board right there instead of having to store it on a counter. So you can pull that out for more counter space. There's a deep fiddle edge, and the fiddles have spacers for draining. Two sinks that are close to the center line of the boat, so they'll drain on either tack. Overall, it's a pretty nice galley. I'm making my way forward into the main saloon. Take a seat right here at the dinette. It's comfy. I really like the Passport 40 saloon. This boat knows what it wants to be and what it doesn't want to be. It's a world cruising boat. It's not a dockside condo. This is a boat designed for a couple to live aboard comfortably and see the world. This dinette's a great arrangement. You can actually eat down here underway on either tack. You're sort of squeezed right in. It's beautiful. To starboard, you have a single settee, which makes a good sea berth on either point of sail with a lee cloth. Clyde and Carolyn have done some nice things to make the boat feel like home. They've added a big screen TV. They've got a diesel stove. The boat's real homey, and yet it's still functional. To me, that's how a world cruising boat should be. All right, the nav station is still, in my point of view, control central for a cruising boat. A lot of modern boats have phased out the nav station with the concept that you're going to have all your instrumentation at the helm. Personally, I think that's nuts. It's great to have a place to be able to look at a chart and be able to have a full-size chart opened up. It's terrific. The Passport 40 nav station is nice. There's a real comfortable seat that you can set to where you need it. You can work on the chart. You've got all your instrumentation here. Again, Clyde and Carolyn are all set up with a chart plotter, radar, SSB, VHF repeater. And you also have your electrical panel here. The forward cabin on the Passport 40 is deceptively large. Clyde and Carolyn have chosen to use this cabin as their stateroom. They'll sleep in the main saloon when underway, but when they're at anchor, this is where they're going to hang out. And it makes good sense because there's good light and there's great ventilation. There's also a lot of storage. As you can see, the, the bunk is rimmed with cabinets, um, and they have nice positive latches, and there's also storage underneath. There's reading lights. This is a pretty friendly cabin. Another great design feature of the Passport 40 is that it has one head, one good head. It's uh, got a separate stall shower, which is great for washing up and also a terrific place to put your follies when they're all wet. Modern designers just can't resist the urge to cram heads all over the boat. But for a real cruising boat, especially a couple cruising, having one spacious head with a great separate shower stall is the way to go. Any cruiser knows that engine access is critical because sooner or later you're going to be working on your engine. Even just for routine maintenance, easy access is a great idea. The Passport 40 has the engine amidships, which is nice for access and also for weight balance. This is where designers love to put the weight if they can get away with it. To actually access the engine, you just quickly pull out these cushions. There's a single plate right here, and voila, there's the ubiquitous Perkins 4108. The aft cabin on the Passport 40 is a quarter cabin to starboard. It has a double bunk for people that like each other, and although it's small, it's, it's not a bad space. It has good ventilation with two opening port lights, and there's a lot of storage. There's a bureau of drawers and a hanging locker. However, many world cruisers seem to convert this cabin into more of a storeroom. It's ideal as your floating garage. 
However, the cabin certainly can be used for your occasional visitors. You can haul your gear out, and they have their own private accommodations, which will make their stay on board a lot more comfortable. I'm standing on the foredeck of the Passport 40. This is a good spot to examine some of the original quality that went into this boat. This is a 1987 model that we're sailing today, and that's easy to forget. It's in such beautiful shape. Take a look at the stem head fitting. It's uh, integral to the boat, obviously, and it ties in the anchor roller. It's a massive, beautifully designed fitting. There's no way for that anchor to jump its lead. Um, small features, these bronze chocks or hawse pipes, they're integral to the rail. They're beautiful. They're stout. Um, one feature that I really like is this bulwark. A raised bulwark to me lends a great feeling of security when I'm working the foredeck. And it also gives you one last chance to grab something you drop. It doesn't just skip over the side. It might hit the bulwark and give you a chance to grab it. I'm making my way aft on the Passport 40, and I have to confess, I still like teak decks. They're great non-skid. They're really great non-skid when wet, and they look beautiful. Another terrific feature of this deck are these vertically mounted stanchions and tall lifelines. They're actually high enough to give you some support should you lean into them. And as you work your way aft, the uh, chain plates and shrouds are mounted far enough inboard so that you can navigate past pretty easily. And also they provide good tight sheeting angles when you're coming up wind. The Passport 40 has a seagoing cockpit. It's a small space and that's one of the trade-offs designer Bob Perry made. By extending the cabin trunk further aft, he created more interior volume. It came at the expense of actual cockpit space. There's nowhere to stretch out in this cockpit. However, for me, as a blue water sailor, that's a trade I'm willing to make, I'm happy to make. Because if a wave does find its way aboard this boat, there's not a whole lot of volume to, to hold the water, and there are also four large drains to evacuate the water. And when I want to go below and get a rest, I'd rather have a good seagoing berth below than trying to stretch out in the cockpit. Another feature that I really do like is that from this perch on the combing, I have good visibility. I can sail. I can reach the helm. I'm also right here at the sheet winch. Let's face it. When you're cruising as a couple, you spend half your life single-handed sailing. And this is a boat set up to sail for one person. Well, it's time to put Fathom to the test. Why don't we take her out and see just how this Passport 40 really sails? So we're sailing Fathom on Puget Sound. Beautiful day for sailing. We got 15 knots apparent. We're sailing fairly close to the wind, about 45 degrees off. We're putting the new north sails to the test. This is a fantastic sailing boat. It just feels right. You can sort of just go with the motion. There's no pounding, there's no slapping. She's a happy boat in the ocean. It's a nice ride. We're powering along at six knots easily without tremendous amount of effort here. And um, and sweet, the helm is light. There's just enough weather helm to know what you're supposed to do steering. And the ride is great. I've always loved these Passport 40s. I think it's one of the best values in a world cruiser that exists today. Okay, we've eased off onto a reach. It's kind of a close reach. 60, 70 off apparent. You know, it's always that deceptive thing. It feels a little smoother and yet your speed shoots up. We're doing 6.4 with uh, 13 knots of a parent, and that's just really good going. Bob Perry loves this boat. Having spoken to Bob over the years, this is one of his favorites. To me, I think it's a great cruising hull. It's a, it's a powerful fin keel with a great entry that doesn't pound. And just for the record, we're now doing seven knots at 70 degrees off and 15 knots of parent, and the ride is smooth as silk. Uh, Perry loves this boat because it's, it's just really, it's. Uh, it's kind of, a, kind of like a sports car in a cruising boat package. It just handles well. It feels well. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't wear you down. For two people to go cruising, you've picked a great boat in my view because it's a boat that won't beat you up. You won't have to micromanage it. If you can get seven knots this easily, uh, it's hard to ask for a heck of a lot more, really.